And now I'd like to look at a few of the tables that I've created which show the probability of hitting profitable or playable flops. These tables are for, again, your pocket pairs, um, your ASX hands, and also offsuit and suited connectors. The great majority of these charts I created using a program called Flopzilla, and you guys should check that out when you get a chance. It's, um, yeah, pretty neat. You can also enter entire ranges and how well ranges hit flops, as I had uh, illustrated also in the first video of the subseries. So initially here we've got a set of two tables. This one here came from PokerStrategy.com, and this one here again from uh, Tony Guerrero. And his analysis is, uh, as often is the case, much more exact. <laughs> uh, it takes more, let's say, not more exact, also this is very exact, but um, it takes many more factors into consideration for actual playing conditions. This table underneath is also Tony's, and it shows you the probability uh, that your opponents won't hit uh, respective flops, given the yeah, respective number of players involved in the hand. I think we'll start here with the table at right. It's a probability of seeing over cards on the flop without hitting a set yourself. So of course, if you have aces, you're never going to see over cards. It's clear. If you have kings, you're going to see an ace on that board without a set of kings 20% of the time, one time in five. It's not uh, negligible. <laughs> So one time in five with kings, you are going to see that ace. Just keep that in the back of your mind. The uh, With queens, you're going to see a king or an ace up to 38% of the time. And this is, you know, I've highlighted jacks here in blue because everybody, especially recreational and novice players, get really excited about jacks. And tens and nines even sometimes. And look at this. At over 50 one percent of all flops, basically fifty-two percent of all flops, you will see a queen, king, or ace when you're holding jacks pre-flop. With tens, it's even worse. Uh, basically, yeah, three times in five, you're going to have over cards, and yeah, nines even worse, all the way down to twos. At eighty-eight percent probability that you, you'll see over cards on the flop without having flop to set yourself. This is quite interesting information I think if it's the first time you've seen it. Very, very useful by the way. Uh, general information on pocket pairs here, you're gonna flop, trips are better. So trips are better means also uh, the chance of flopping four of a kinds and full houses. In this situation, um, yeah, and that's gonna happen basically 7.5 to 1. So if you guys remember this, just basically 8 to 1 against you flopping your set or better, then you've got a pretty good idea of the odds that you need if you're just calling, banking on, flopping that set without any post-flop lines that can outplay your opponents or push them off of hands. And another good little number here is um, this 4 to 1 against any given pocket pair hitting trips by the river, which is why, of course, you see in very many hand-to-hand um, -hand matchups, as we covered also in the video series on Poker Math, um, you're going to see that these small and mid pocket pairs have very often somewhere between 15 and 20 percent equity. Uh, yeah, versus an over pair, for example, because of tripping up and the likelihood that when you trip up, your opponent does not. So, yeah, these are really interesting numbers here. Again, if you have a pocket pair, you're only going to flop a full house one time in 137, so 136 against. Um, when you're holding a pocket pair, and you flop the board then pairs essentially that's going to happen basically 5 to 1 16 percent of the time and of course flopping that big four of a kind is going to happen basically one time in 408 so, i.e. close to never and yeah I mean the real number you need to keep in mind is this one here the 7.5 to 1 for flopping trips are better when you're holding your pocket pair that's important also know that when you are holding jacks it's good to go ahead and raise, up, raise those up in general um, barring super tight or to position open raises, which will probably be here and on ace kings kind of stuff, um, because of the likelihood that over cards will flop very often, basically every other time when you're holding jacks. 
and here again three times in five when you're holding tens um, two times in three essentially when you're holding nines to yeah, nines or eights and then sevens even worse etc yeah pretty interesting I think for you guys who maybe haven't seen this information before and Tony of course goes a bit further <laughs> yeah yes yeah, here probability of hitting a favorable flop over pair of better is how he defines that with pocket pairs and he's qualify that here with unfavorable flops being monotone, i.e. three suited, or three consecutive cards when you don't have the open-ended straight draw or the nut flush draw yourself. So that means basically only when you're holding aces will you have the nut flush draw on a three suited flop. And the open-ended straight draw, of course, you can have with uh, any pair except for aces or twos, essentially. And again, as always, with the open-ended straight draw, you don't want to be holding a pair of threes on a four, five, six flop and <laughs> thinking that you're going to be good necessarily. Uh, if the seven hits, then the guy with the pair of eights, of course, has a better straight. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, essentially, when you're holding the, the bottom card of a, of a straight like that, you want to see that two. <laughs> so basically, I, would, I mean, in that case, I would only give myself four outs for the two. And yeah, not putting anybody on three, seven. So yeah, just be careful when you're drawing to those bottom sides of the open end straight draws, so called idiot straight draws. Um, don't give yourself necessarily the full eight outs very often, just the bottom card of that run. So good, when you're holding eights, I'm sorry, when you're holding aces, the probability of hitting a favorable flop over pair better when it's not a monotone or three consecutive cards is going to happen 80% of the time. Good. King 60, da 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 da, jacks, look at this. When you hold jacks, you're only going to flop a, fla a favorable flop as he defined it here, one time in three, more or less, a little better. Pretty intense, one time in three. Um, with tens, very similar, and you guys see the rest of the numbers. So keep that in mind. These jacks, tens, even queens are exceedingly vulnerable. And yeah, anytime those over cards hit and you get a lot of callers, um, Pre-flop, the likelihood that somebody's on an ace or a king is extremely high, also shorthanded, um, in multi-way pots again, not in necessarily heads-up pots, but it's again very player-specific, uh, table-specific, but in general, the more players involved in the hand, the increased, um, well, the probability will be increased that somebody is holding these, um, at least one ace or one king or one queen in their hand. And when you see those cards, when you're in a multi-way pot and you're holding jacks, yeah, if you're not in position, that's, that's a good check, check call, maybe check fold situation for you. And again, always table specific, player specific, etc. But just know that yeah, these are very vulnerable hands and these are the respective odds of hitting, yeah, again, favorable flops with and without the sets. All right, this is very interesting. This is very important, especially for shorthanded play. Also very important for heads-up play, uh, or in heads-up pots, uh, even three-way pots, say. Uh, it's, again, from Tony, says, uh, probability that an unpaired flop won't match any of your opponent's whole cards if they're on a random hand. So number of opponents, that means you plus one opponent. Your opponent will miss, as we've mentioned in various videos, two times in three. Even against two opponents, they're going to have missed two times in five, namely 41% of the time. Against three opponents, they'll all have missed that flop 26% of the time, one time in four. So that's relatively high, even at even with three opponents in your in your pot, and you need to really know these numbers here. Again, this is the magic number: 66, 65% basically two times in three and heads up pots your opponent will have whiffed as will you <laughs> okay probability that a paired flop won't match any of your opponent's hands uh, any, any of your opponent's whole cards if they have random hands so paired flops it's even less likely that your opponents hit a lot of people see that paired flop and they you know if they're not holding the trips if they're not holding the third card to that pair they freeze up especially novice and recreational players. Here it is that it's actually on paired boards. It's even better for you. Your, your fold equity is higher when you bet into paired 
boards because the likelihood that your opponents miss is also higher. So only against one opponent on a paired flop, your opponent will have missed four times in five. Against two opponents, they're going to have missed three times in five. Against three, I'm sorry, against two opponents, three times in five. Against three opponents, every other flop, they'll have missed. <laughs> you plus three guys in the pot, flop pairs, 50% of the time, these guys, if they are on random hands, will have completely whiffed. Very, very important for uh, positional play, especially pushing your opponents off of hands. Uh, especially important in shorthanded play, six max and less, or six max and fewer. And um, of course, crucial in, in heads up and three way games. So that was that, guys, uh, for pairs, especially, and the likelihood that your opponents will have missed flops.